Good. Perfect. Good. Okay. You want to get in there? You want to come on? No, no, no. no, get in there with the grandma. Come on. History. Grandma. Come on. History. Okay. History. There we go. Now we got a little history. Perfect. Fabulous. Great. Thank Perfect. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nice to see you. of the Institute. Put simply, her leadership has kept a sometimes unruly carry out her work. President Bush may be the decider, but Jean Dunn is our enabler. <laughs> that liberty is an end stage, a luxury. That people want to add first for physical security or just stability. <laughs> Food and safety, yes, but no less a say of what happens in their lives. Our chairman often speaks of this precisely because she has been at practice when these things are intertwined. And she is an articulate and forceful advocate for these values and principles because they have a concrete meaning in her own life. She escaped her country of birth to secure not only physical Thank you very much, Ken, for all your kind words and really thank you so much for your continued, sir, really superb leadership of NDI. I think that we all owe you with this and everything that Ken said is true double. So, uh, Jean, thank you very much for everything you have done and Kristen for everything that you have done in making this such a great event and all the rest of our colleagues who have worked so hard and we're here. Thank you very, very much. Um, although I'm grateful to everyone for joining us and pleased to see so many of you here, I would like to begin with two salutations that sound particularly well Our uh, gathering today, Bear Graham, uh, I expect that you will notice some certain recurring themes. The first is that although democracy is often frustrating and always imperfect, it is still by far promotes opportunities for women and helps to build democratic institutions. For more than 20 years, NDI has acted in the belief that democratic aspirations are universal. Celebrate what is most vibrant about democracy at the grassroots and also honor a national leader who has championed the cause of development and empowerment at the local level. We're privileged as well to have with us the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, free of chauvinism or jealous egos. To reach a position of leadership, you have to understand how to make people do what you want, but more important, you have to persuade them to want their priorities, assemble coalitions, mobilize support and get results that lift the lives of people both at home and overseas. She's not only an advocate of democracy, but also an inspiring example on how to practice democracy. She is tough, smart, caring, and a loyal friend of NDI, and a very close personal friend and somebody that I always delight in seeing, so please
two reasons. First of all, chronologically, because of the high esteem that I have for the National Democratic Institute ever since of the American people to that place, and she wanted to share that with the rest of the world. And as the Secretary of State, she led a principled foreign policy, improving our alliances and promoting democracy all over the world while keeping America strong in every way. She is indeed a great American statesman. Thank you, Madam Holloway. given to the first woman elected on the African continent to be the president of a country, the president of Liberia, President Ellen Johnson's relief of Liberia. I, <laughs> last year, I had a very special privilege. I was leading a congressional delegate. I said then, when I was in uh, Mongolia, uh, that uh, President Sir Johnson had, excuse me, President Johnson Sir Lee, had electrified the nation with her election. And now we as Americans were going to help her electrify Liberia. We haven't fun the job is not done yet, but that is our commitment. In Liberia, our congressional delegation saw a leader revered by the people, challenged by the difficulties in her country, and determined to make progress. When she came to the capital for all, it was a particular moment of inspiration when she said, I ran for president because I am determined to see good governance in Liberia in my lifetime. But I also ran because I am a mother of four and I wanted to see our children smile again. I know my colleague, Nita Lowy, is supposed to be here, but we're having votes, and that's why we're sort of in and out. That's the way it is. You think as speaker, I could control that, but uh, <laughs> when the members keep on talking, that's just the way it is. I know that Nita Lowy uh, took a trip, a, a, a delegation there. You are deserving of the high honor of receiving a grant named for Secretary Madeleine Albright. Congratulations to you. I want to make the enormous sacrifice they may have made and say how wonderful it is that this fellowship is being established in her name for her courage. We come together today grateful values. Our relationship with any country should make the world safer, our economies stronger, and our people freer. Consistent with this, three pillars of the United States form our national security, growing our economy by increasing American exports abroad, and by promoting democratic freedom and human rights around the world. The world is changing rapidly in stability and environmental degradation. We serve our interest and the world when we demonstrate our leadership and our values in places like Darfur using all of our diplomatic and economic leverage to end the genocide. One week ago, President Bush and Congress awarded the Congressional Gold Medal to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. It was an extraordinary day when America's leadership in a bipartisan way and, and Democratic champion Aung San Suu Kyi are also fighting for the soul of their country. And thank you, Madeline, Al Madeline Albright, for your leadership on this issue in your various official capacities and now as well. Let there be no doubt that the United States stands with them in their just cause. I'm proud that the Foreign Affairs Committee just passed yesterday tough new sanctions on those responsible for gross violations of human rights in Burma. I commend President and Mrs. Bush for their... We must not accept the false choices about protecting our national security, promoting economic opportunity, and advancing freedom and human rights. We can and must achieve all of them. Again, that nations are, excuse me, are driven by the endless flywheel of violence, 
believing that one last, one final violent gesture will bring peace. They have performed excellently. <laughs> In terms of Iraq, they have created a secure environment where political progress could be made. However, despite the excellence of their performance, the Iraqi government has failed, has failed to make all we in our country determined to build a future worthy of their sacrifice, a future worthy of the vision of our founders, and a future worthy of the aspiration of our time. I was on the steps of the Capitol as a student in Washington to hear his inaugural address. And practically every student of American history can tell you and quote from the history books uh, what the president said in that speech. And one part of it, he said to the American in the speech, was this, President Kennedy said, and to the citizens of the world, ask not what America can do for you, but what we can do working together for the freedom of mankind. It's that spirit of collaboration. This is part of our tradition. It is the legacy of our founders to respect the dignity and worth of every person. It was in our Declaration of Independence. Not only in that Declaration of Independence, but in our Constitution. And so confident were our founders at the time that they made a great seal of the United States. Uh, we will resume the meal right now and then continue the program shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Oh, she wasn't here. I couldn't say it. about what a thrill it was for us when you came to the joint session and, and what you said about wanting the children to smile again. That's good governance in Liberia and your life and fighting and help you out working. How are harder. things? We're coming along. How are we doing with the electricity? More and more. We hope by, by uh, early next year we should have a lot of the capital city covered mm -hmm. and we'll start seeing what we do about rural electrification. But, uh, Oh, so many hopes are running, not only in your own country, but just for your success. People are so thrilled to do that. Challenge. So we think it just must succeed for them. Yes. All the women. Yeah, yeah, no. the, challenge, the challenge for you, though, is yes. the president of Liberia, and Liberia's ambassador to the world. And that's a so hard. hard. Well, what kind of 
Right. Yeah. Right. She's perfect. She's made for it. You know, it's like the convergence of all these things. Madam President, this is John. Uh, John works on my staff. John Stivers on my staff, and he's been very interested in Liberia. So, what is it? Thank you so much for uh, just being you. Congratulations Thank to you. you. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> very exciting, Madam President, <laughs> Madam Speaker. My goodness. Can we can we do can we do all four of you? Three, three. Okay, then we'll get you in there, sir. Then you'll come in. Ken. Okay, okay, right there. Eyes right to me. Very good. That's very good. Good. Okay, Ken, step right in there. Okay. Very good. Okay, that's great. Eyes right to me. One more. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, yeah, unfortunately, we've got a run. Director Dwayne Johnson Cochran and producer Tiffany Persons have opened a window onto the 50-50 group of Sierra Leone and its efforts to help women be full partners in the political system. Too many nations put themselves at a permanent disadvantage by failing to make women full participants in the political process. In its 50-50 group and its involvement in this August historic parliamentary elections. In a nonpartisan and professional fashion, they organized at the grassroots, built up political parties, conducted training and voter education. I was reminded yet again of why we care so much about democracy. We can attach whatever labels we want, whether they're academic, strategic, or political, but what they boil down to. When I visited Sierra Leone a decade ago, it was hard to imagine that a country would ever become democratic and stable. But giving birth to democracy has always depended on I find that inspiring, but let's be honest, not everyone feels that way. Primarily because of Iraq and the outcome of elections in the Palestinian Authority, many Americans now... and Harriet Touré. contributed to the end of the war. Soon after, I was torn that even though peace had been achieved through the blood, sweat, tears, and suffering were relegated to the back seats. The new dem democratically elected government was left to the men to manage any way they saw fit. It was business as usual. What I did that peace and rebuild our country. In November 2000, at the end of a workshop organized by Rajubendra and Abato Thomas of the British Council, supported by Marina Nano of, West, of the Westminster Foundation for Democracy, facilitated by Leslie Abdallah of Shevolution, supported also by Joe Hall and Hall, we are a nation that only recently emerged from a dreadful conflict. 
Looking at the other African nations still locked in conflict, the possibility that bloodshed and chaos could return still haunts us. So for us, democracy is not just a matter of elections and parties and political discourse, important as those things are. Democracy for us is part of our healing process. Democracy is part of our rebuilding process. It is right that a new kind of system is being established in which the concerns of women, no less than the concerns of men, shape decisions and chart a new path. This is an absolute truth. So we are grateful. brought me to the 50-50 group and to this honor today. It also bears learned similarities to the lives of millions of Sierra other courageous and hard work women across Sierra Leone. With him, my playmates were always boys. Yet, when my half-brother was born, my father's first son, my relationship with my father changed. Of I saw girls I knew, girls my age, taking out of school and getting into marriage to wealthy diamond dealers. In Kono, women are not allowed to become paramount chiefs, even when they belong. prison during the military dictatorship of Samuel Doe. She gained experience of a different sort as the administrator and then director of the UN Development Program's Regional Bureau for Africa. And in 1997, she ran for president and finished second. She's left, but my greetings to any of the congressmen and women who may be here to speak up below seat, and all her colleagues. Thank you. Secretary Albright and the National Democratic Institute for bestowing this honor for me, the Deborah Amber Harriman Democracy Award, which recognizes leadership, integrity, courage, and a dedication to democratic values and practices. Many of those women, like Secretary Albright, like Speaker Pelosi, like the 50-50 group, who have done so much to advance the problem, jumped right in there to give their support, and they've continued to do so as we try to rebuild our nation. We know that NDI worldwide staff work and toil in so many of the world's emerging democracies to ensure their success. World Systems, the Center for International Private Enterprise, the Solidarity Center, and the National to applaud you for what you have done. Okay. 
We applaud your work because you focus not just on elections, but the institutions of democracy. Just a few days ago, I had the opportunity to speak at the annual app that my primary challenge was to create the institutions that will stand the test of time, institutions that will be the hallmark of has watched our country's focus on personalities, relying on one person, most times one big man, to lead the way has set us on this path of national reconstruction and renewal. I would also like to recognize the role of the U.S. Congress and the leadership of Speaker Pelosi, whom I had the honor to address at a joint meeting of Congress in April 2006 for the work she has done in breaking every bureaucratic head we also said in that regard that when the politics in Washington is united, as they have been in the case of Liberia, across party lines, but let me say to you today that American beacon of freedom burns no less bright on the African and the little girl who was speaking very loudly to a little boy, the teacher went to her and spoke very harshly to her and told her to be quiet. You're a little girl. You ought not to be so rude. You ought not to be making such noise. You ought to be gentle and quiet. And she stood for a moment. And then she said to him, remember a woman is now president. <laughs> In closing, let me say, liberty are universal values. He was realistic and understood the difficult and constant effort required to build a better world. He was also idealistic in perceiving Madam President, thank you very much. Nimata, Harriet, Abator, thank you all for joining us.